So in the world of text editors turned IDE, you've got a lot of great options backed by a lot of great companies. There's Atom, which is developed by the folks over at GitHub. There's Brackets, which is developed by Adobe. There's Sublime Text, which has been around forever. There's also Notepad++, but the only people that use that is Microsoft ASP.NET Classic developers. But now there's a relatively new text editor that's joined the battle, and that's Visual Studio Code. Now, if you're familiar with Visual Studio, yes, this is a text editor that is developed by Microsoft. However, it is completely open source. It runs on any operating system, and it's absolutely freaking awesome. Now I use Visual Studio and C Sharp every day at my actual real life job, and I have a very love-hate relationship with the actual enterprise version of Visual Studio. Visual Studio Code is nothing like Visual Studio, the actual IDE at all. It looks very similar, and it has a lot of similar features like IntelliSense and some awesome debugging capabilities, but outside of that, they're not really similar. In fact, I think it's kind of silly that Microsoft called this Visual Studio Code, but people are familiar with the name Visual Studio, so I guess I can't blame them. So if you couldn't guess from the title of this video, we're gonna install Visual Studio Code on Ubuntu 16.4. So it's not in the software repositories, you actually have to download it from Microsoft. So just Google Visual Studio Code or Google Visual Studio and go to products and under top products, go to Visual Studio Code. And then once you're there, there's a big old green button that says download and Microsoft graciously placed Tux right in the center of the screen. Since we're running this on Ubuntu, you wanna download the Debian file. At this point, I don't think Ubuntu even supports 32-bit. So go ahead and download the thing, save it to your file system and open up a terminal and use dpkg to install it. Now, if you get an error message saying that it's missing dependencies, just do sudo apt install dash f and that'll fix any broken dependencies that you have. And once it's installed, open up the dash and type in VS Code or Visual Studio or a combination of the two. And this is Visual Studio. So at the top of the window, there'll always be this little notification area. Since Visual Studio isn't part of the package repositories, unfortunately you need to download the updates for it by hand and any updates will appear in this little notification bar. Kinda sucks, but maybe they'll fix it in the future. So on the bottom left hand side, you have this little pane that pops out. If you're familiar with Visual Studio Enterprise, the actual IDE, this is very similar to the out output or debug window. And over on the right hand side, there's a little search feature. And next to that are a couple controls, which allow you to change the indentation, which is important for languages like Python, change the file encoding, and change the line in sequence. And of course, like any good text editor, you can change the language mode or file association. So in the event that you open up a file without an extension, you can just go ahead and change the language that you're looking at here. This is pretty standard across any text editor, I think. So just like Atom and Brackets, Visual Studio has fantastic support for plugins and extensions, though it doesn't have near the number of extensions that something like Atom or Sublime has. Since most of the work I do in Visual Studio Code involves JavaScript in some way, I like to install ESLint, which is a fantastic static analysis plugin. And I'm gonna be using my website as an example of some of the things Visual Studio Code can do, so I'm gonna install the Ember CLI plugin. And just like the other text editor, Visual Studio Code has a file and folder explorer. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the folder where my website lives. And you'll probably notice that a terminal popped up on the bottom. So this terminal is actually integrated into VS Code and it's really, really freaking powerful. Text editors like Atom have this too, but I think that it's a separate plugin. It's not quite as powerful as this one. So Visual Studio has this built-in search feature that's super powerful and it's actually surprisingly quick. It's got built-in Git support and I'll show you how that works here in a little bit. And it also has this insanely powerful built-in debugger. Now I'm not gonna cover this in this video, maybe in the next video I can because it's super powerful, it's got a lot of features. But for now, let's just stick to the text editor. So just to show you what the terminal can do, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up my website. It's an Ember app, so we're just gonna do Ember serve here. Now in my opinion, the most powerful and beneficial feature that Visual Studio has that other text editors don't have is IntelliSense. And IntelliSense is like code completion, but a whole lot more. It does really intelligent code completion, and it also provides like comments and descriptions for the snippets that you're trying to use. So in this example, I'm doing something with HTML. All I have to type is a bracket, and you can see all the different types of tags I can use. And as I go down this list, you can see the built-in description for each tag. Now, since I installed the Ember CLI plugin, I can use the IntelliSense for that too. So in this case, I use the if snippet, and in this case, I use the partial snippet. So it's really nice not having to remember the exact syntax for each command or operator you wanna do. And IntelliSense also works for CSS too, which is unbelievably convenient. So if you ever worked in CSS, CSS is kinda of weird and there's a lot of really odd rules. And in this case, I'm using margin top. And as you can see from the description, there's different ways that you can use margin top. It is summarized here in the description. It's built into Visual Studio Code and it's unbelievably awesome. 
And there's other things that are super nice, like the fact that the color code that I'm using here actually shows you a preview of the color that I'm using. So that's all IntelliSense and that's all built into Visual Studio Code. Now there's plugins that you can get for Brackets and Atom that provide this sort of functionality, but this is all built in and baked in to Visual Studio Code. These aren't extensions, except for the Ember CLI one, but everything else is just built into the text editor. And yet another feature of Visual Studio Code is when you set the rules that you wanna use for a specific language, like remember how earlier I used ESLint. So ESLint is a static analysis tool that analyzes your code to make sure that you're following best practices and standards. In this case, I wanna make sure that I'm using single quotes instead of double quotes. And in this file, you'll notice that I'm using double quotes. So each quote is underlined and I can tell the text editor to just fix all of those. And that extends to other more complicated JavaScript things too. So static analysis is kind of like its own topic. And I guess I could make a video for that at some point too. So the final thing I'm gonna cover in this video is VS Code's Git integration. So in this example, I'm gonna remove some old tests from my site that are no longer applicable. And I'll also remove some comments in a couple files just so I've got a couple things to push into my Git repository. So here are my changes. I've removed two files and modified one. Shows here in this pane. You go to make a commit, it reminds you that you need to put a message in there. So I'll put my message in and we'll submit the commit. Notice my changes are gone and all I need to do from here is a push. We'll authenticate with Git and that's it. So my only critique of this feature is that I feel like a little more feedback would be nice, but I guess that's the nature of Git, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. But that's it. That will wrap up this Visual Studio Code video. If you liked the video, you want to see more, leave a like, leave a comment, and thanks for watching.